with influenza and other respiratory infections this winter based on what was observed in the Southern Hemisphere. And what do we know about SARS-CoV-2 co-infection? Is it, is it a worse prognosis? Uh, so thank you, Jason, for the question. I'll, I'll, I'll begin. Um, so it's a good question that you have about um, the, the circulation of influenza uh, virus in the southern hemisphere and what we may expect from the northern hemisphere. So as, as I'm sure you know, we have um, what is called the Global Influenza Surveillance and Response System, uh, which is GISRIS, um, which is a system that's been in place for um, more than 70 years. Uh, which utilizes laboratories and respiratory disease surveillance systems across the globe um, to collect samples um, from people who have influenza-like illness or severe acute respiratory illness to test for viruses like flu. Um, that system was used for COVID-19, uh, which is really quite incredible, uh, which really facilitated the world to be able to quickly uh, test for COVID-19. Um, what we know is that there are, uh, countries are using the GISRIS system right now for influenza and for COVID-19. Um, and there are many countries that are continuing to test for influenza. Um, in the last two week period, um, where we have the reporting period from July 20th to the 2nd of August, uh, almost 300,000 specimens for influenza were tested and only 37 were positive for influenza. Um, this comes across a large number of countries um, that, are, that are looking for influenza, and so it seems like flu uh, circulation is low. Um, there may be a number of reasons for this, particularly in the southern hemisphere, uh, where they are having their flu season, uh, their winter flu season. Many of the physical distancing and public health and social measures that have been put in place, which keep, keeps people apart, uh, may have actually uh, played a role in reducing circulation of influenza. Um, I think we need to be careful about making uh, a, an assessment of what may happen in the Northern Hemisphere for a number of reasons. First of all, we need to continue to test for influenza all across the globe. So the systems that are in place that are testing for COVID must continue to test for flu. That's first and foremost. Secondly, we do have a vaccine for influenza. And so it's important that people get vaccinated against influenza when that vaccine becomes available. That's really important because it will be quite difficult when, if somebody is infected with either COVID or flu and they have a flu-like illness or cold-like symptoms, we won't be able to distinguish immediately between whether somebody has flu or whether somebody has COVID. We will need testing to be able to do that. So it could, be, it could complicate the clinical picture, um, but there are tools that are in place for influenza. And so it is really, really important that when the vaccine becomes available for flu, that people do take that vaccine. Please go ahead, Dr. Aylward. Thanks, Margaret. And Jason, just to reinforce the importance of the issue that you raise with respect to flu and COVID. Last year, as, as uh, Maria mentioned, the COVID hit the Northern Hemisphere in most places as we were coming out of the flu season. And this is extremely important because as you look at the massive expansion that had to happen in critical care capacities in the Northern Hemisphere in particular, in a lot of the uh, countries and areas that uh, we were working with, when, they were, when you asked a, a hospital, how did you expand from 30 beds to 45 or 30 to 50 or whatever, the answer often was because we had that additional surge capacity for flu. So a lot of the surge capacity that we relied on to be able to manage the critical care, critically sick patients last year certainly initially came from that surge capacity. And that highlights the reason that it's so important to get the flu vaccination rates up this year, even relative to previous years, as Maria emphasized, because we need that capacity potentially to manage COVID also uh, this year. Again, as we spoke about last uh, in our last presser, um, we have a huge susceptibility gap still against uh, against this disease, COVID. We're going into a high season for transmission of respiratory illnesses, um, and hence our concern that we have all possible capacities optimized to be able to manage that. And part of this is going to be managing flu and managing uh, ensuring optimal flu vaccination, as as Maria mentioned. Thank you very much, Doctors Van Kerkhoven.